Yo, what's going on, everybody? I am not in the normal studio. Um, we're going to try this out, see what happens. I actually just got out of work. How is everybody? I'm going to let people uh, come in. I do want to thank... Um, we have no podcast, so we have no guests this week. There's an extra week this month, so we're going to leave it at four a month. And I'm going to try and go live every now and then, or, you know, we're going to try today. Um, I do want to thank the sponsors that we have. Uh, yes, we're live, live. Um, uh, thank the sponsors, Jobber, Vita Pro Pack, Local, uh, Spectronics, and the newest one, Nordic Technology, which is Fastat, if you guys ever uh, heard of those. Um, if you need extra wires for your thermostat, they help you out with that. I'm pretty excited to uh, showcase some of the stuff. I forgot a light there. There we go. What's up, everybody? Uh, we're going to hang out a little bit. Um, I actually, like I said, was getting out of work. I almost didn't make it. Let me know if you can hear um, everything. And uh, how many fingers am I holding up? What's up? I thought we were over that, Brett. Hollywood? Really? What's up, Brett? What's up, Brian? What's up, Eddie? Mechanical environments. Loud and clear. I'll have to see how it sounds because there's probably an echo in this room. Good day. Only us. Call replacement on a train president. Another one down. Um, I have some really unique videos coming out where we're covering up for another uh, company that came down from good old San Antonio. So can't wait to, to uh, share those videos because that those have been the worst um, new installs I've ever seen. What's up, Ben? I just got out of work too. I got a, I got a call. I've been, I've been running a bunch of calls over here um, since my van's getting wrapped. So I'm working out of the truck right now. I'm gonna try and bring this closer. I'm working out of the truck right now, and I thought I would have an easy week because it was just supposed to be maintenance, but the calls keep coming in. We have an office in San Antonio, so I don't know the name of the company. Uh, I had a guy that I was talking to, and we we're talking about it because he, I needed, I need to redo the doors on this walk-in, or we're just gonna try and seal it the best that we can. They put in these weird plastic doors, or I mean, they're not plastic, but they're they feel like plastic on these two walk-in. Coolers and uh, one's a cooler, one's a freezer. Now, there's a gap all around the door, and there's a huge gap at the bottom, right? So I told them, you're going to get condensation, you're going to have humidity, um, stuff like that. So unless they want us to get new doors, because these these doors, and I'll explain it in the video, but um, even the the model serial number, whatever's labeled on the side of it somebody purposely went and scratched it out so yeah white lettering no if, uh, if it was white lettering i'd still be driving it around right now i've got a whole van wrap pictures or it didn't happen i was going to save it for nights um Let me let me get, let me show you guys one of the photos, and I'll try and get it get it ready for nights. Um, I uh, like I said, I'll talk about it on nights. But I went out there to check it out, and I didn't have time. We were, we were too busy. Um, this was the end of the year, right before winter, so it was the end of summer. You know, we got pretty hectic, and then my maintenance kicked in, and, and I was trying to help out a guy, but he needed the the bid, like, that day or that week, at least. He told me he could buy me some time, but I was like, no, like, you know, it was one we have to pass on. 
And do I have a picture of the door? Okay, so I'm gonna email email myself the the two that I can show you, and then maybe on nights on Thursday, go check out HVAC nights, and I'll pull up the whole like video. I don't think I'll be able to post it until the end of the week. But let me um what's everybody else up to? You got uh, I meant somebody mentioned that they're going to, or they have uh, heat waves going on. And I wish I had taken before photos, because I didn't. I took, um, I took all the after photos, and the guy was like super pissed uh, there in the kitchen, pointing out all these little things that they saw. And I went because the, the drain was overflowing. Like it was like a. a what do you call it? A uh, fountain in there, like a river. And they had this thing pitched all weird. So let me see if I can send it. Super small walk-in box. I don't know how you screw it up. 81 umbrella came in clutch. I haven't busted mine out yet. Uh, nothing but ice machine PMs. Um, I have that. That's the maintenance that I have that I have up right now. I'm trying. I'm gonna try and pass it off to my brother. Um, you know, I get I got I got so many calls coming in that I'm pretty happy that I've been pulled off the maintenance. So it's cool. 85 in Vegas. It's like it got cooler because we got a lot of wind. So there's a bunch of of wind coming in. But like right now, I went out after six to go fix uh, a walk-in cooler. And they have those high, it's on, it's on a rooftop, the condenser, they have those um, high walls, right? It's like a five foot wall around the rooftop. So I had no wind whatsoever and it was hot as hell. 70 to 80 with a chance of snow, Colorado weather. Yeah. Pouring rain. No, we got we got like hundred. We hit we hit a hundred the other day. I, I had to check because I was like, man, it's pretty hot today. Going to Tulsa in the morning. All right, let me pull up the email real quick. What kind of work is everybody up to? I've had a bunch of I've had a variety compressor changeouts. I got some new units to put in. Okay, I'm going to show you guys real quick. Share screen. Let's see, tab. Okay, this is this is what was alarming to the uh, the cooks and and the whatever you call them, the managers that were on site. They paid fifty grand for two walk-in boxes. Um, essentially to get rebuilt. I don't know if they were rebuilt. They just looked like they were like, uh, what do you call it? Like remodeled or, or something like that. Like it looked the same, but it could have been rebuilt. Um, two walk-in boxes, two evaporators, two condensers, like like everything, new doors, all that. Didn't look like in rough shape, be rough shape before. I think they actually made it worse. So... We have, I need to, these are the doors that I'm talking about. I don't know what they're made out of. I need to look at uh, the video. Uh, I talked to another guy about what we could do because he does custom work for us sometimes. He's never heard of this brand either. I think I have to check. Hold on. Enter something. Hold on. Intercom, what the hell does that say? Intercom doors. I don't know if you guys have heard of intercom doors. Shit. Can we say heat infiltration? Uh, yeah, yeah, man. Like they're like, hey, did you know you could see inside the the walk-in box that the cooks were just like laughing and joking around. I was like, what do you mean? They're like, hit the lights, hit the lights. And then they, they turned it off and I'm like, no shit. So this one that we're looking at, 
that I took a picture of. I didn't even look to the left, but the one that that's right there dead in front of us is a walk-in cooler, which is, it's still going to work, right? It's whatever. They're going to get condensation. The one to the left of it is a freezer. You walk in that thing, there is frost in the air, all white. You can't see, you know, a foot in front of you. Um, none of these doors even seal all the way around. So that's going to be a fun video. I need to piece, I need to edit that and piece that together. Um, yeah, they were just complaining the whole time. And and I walked in there and they're like, are you the, the company that, that put this in? I'm like, hell no. So we got this one. Can you guys tell me what's wrong with this? If you guys, yeah, I think that's on the screen, right? Walk in there. From, from memory, I we had a single fan evaporator, right? Mounted in the back. I walk in. This is the first thing that you see. So they put in a, a bigger equipment and they just shoved it in there, right? It doesn't even, it doesn't even fit. We're going to put it sideways. That thing is narrow. It is like five feet at most width. <laughs> Yeah, it's a huge evaporator for that little box. It was a single fan, and they sold them a double. Um, but they'll, they'll they'll make it work. And if you guys look at, at the top, can you see how level that is? The drain is in the back on the right. Yeah, it's a small-ass box, dude. It's like maybe 10 to 12 feet deep, and then like, I don't know, like five feet um, like I could touch both walls on the side. I walked in there and I was like, no freaking way, dude. So not only was it not leveled cause it's, it's held together by like these little, um, five sixteen screws on the inside, which we do to put it in place. Sometimes if we're having a hard time getting it up, we, uh, put, we put in the little screws to kind of hold it. And then we bolt it in. No, there's no bolts on this thing whatsoever. That drain line, you can't see it here, but it doesn't even, you can kind of tell that the, I don't know, it's too straight. So there's no pitch whatsoever. Recirculating. There's no, yeah, there's no circulation in this entire box. It is hitting that wall. <laughs> It is hitting that wall and then being brought right back. And then that little gap in the back, like, geez, dude. And then I don't know why they put the um, the uh, mechanical controller like off to the side over here. Well, I guess, because if you put it there, it's gonna probably satisfy way too quick. But yeah, that's what we got going on today. And uh, right now I had a walk-in cooler call. It is like a closet. It is it is super small. And that's what I, when I mentioned it to my girlfriend, I was like, you know, like our closet, like our walk-in closet, that's the size of this. Uh, it's exactly the size of that, of that walk-in box. So like at the time, I think they were trying to claim it under insurance or something. Like this was, my buddy is a, a project manager and uh, they were getting a lot of stuff replaced here and there. And, and they wanted bids, but he found us like a little too late. Like he found me on Facebook and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, I was like, man, I just don't have time to, to bid on it. Even like, I wouldn't be able to get all the pricing and, and all that together. <laughs> but yeah, I love uh, chiller startups. I get paid to basically hang out. Uh, factory guy does his thing. Haven't had any issues on startups. A pre-startup checks are pretty important, especially leaks. I can imagine, dude. Y'all deal with a lot of uh, a lot of refrigerant. <laughs> Jesus, guys. Yeah, so they're gonna have condensation. They're gonna have all this other stuff. I had to basically reroute the drain and everything. I'll put that video together uh, as soon as I can. <laughs> uh, 
Mars Universal blower motors are complicated for no reason. I had to program it for two seconds after troubleshooting. And then I read the manual and you have to connect a wire they give you. Hmm. I just had somebody uh, talk or comment on one of my intelligent videos and gave me a whole bunch of information. I'm like, well, I don't know. The board messed up. They make things a little too complicated. Two compressor change outs and four coil cleanings in two days. I can't catch a break. I have my van wrapped, like I said. I thought I was going to have it easy. I've been running a bunch of calls out of my truck. That TXV or EEV on that EVAP will basically live its life in the closed position. So we uh, we found a lot of issues with it, and I, I didn't even like want to tackle the the um, the freezer, right? So let me just put that back up there. So like the freezer next to it is identical like they put the same system in there it's the same exact size so there is a freezer that is running basically like this right so that one is it's it's acting up a little bit too now will the box get cold of course um you can get away with a lot even on these uh crappy installs um what was i going to say like we had a drain issue, we had a leveling issue. Obviously this equipment's not right. And I was like, you know what? You know, they paid so much for it and they got it done. Um, the guys that put it in are four hours away, so they're not gonna come back and do any uh, service on it, you know? So yeah, uh, <laughs> this is what we have to deal with. Uh, we fixed his drain, kind of repiped it and then we we're going to leave it at that. And then he wanted us to fix the door. So we're going to get that done too. That thing is crazy, dude. Let's see. Everybody has their first 80 degree week or what because i got i got it's been hot here forever first heat wave <sighs> brett preview on the truck wrap god i'll probably do a video on that too so we got new logos we got new um we're getting the website done and everything i've, I've just been really behind on it like we've had it, but I did it right. Like I did it in a, in a little editor. So I'll just show you. Van wrap is coming. We'll get that hopefully tomorrow. And it's uh, completely different from the last one that I had. Cause uh, I'm not going to call anybody out, but we have a couple of other companies that look a little too identical to our old wrap so i had to change it satan's butthole <laughs> it is it is hot like all year uh, I'll, I'll tell you you know i'm glad i don't have to do addicts or anything like that but it, it is pretty hot You hit 70s, no 80s yet. Damn, Jason. See you later, man. Man, been busy and busy. We've had some compressors give out on different kinds of equipment, a lot of refrigeration calls, uh, more so than uh, the AC, which is kind of weird that we're having all these uh, 
hot days and it's all the the walk-in boxes that are giving out here and there i think i have a, quite a bit of calls on on walk-ins and i'll do videos on those And then I got to get to the ice machines. Uh, time of year. Yeah. Um, and I can tell you what, like all these coils are dirty because none of them, none of them do maintenance. We're going to have a bunch of calls coming in once it does get a little bit, a little bit hotter to where it's not because right now it's really windy so that's probably helping out a lot of the the systems and stuff because it does get fresh like early in the day and then late at night or in the evening so uh once it gets really hot like our normal weather you're gonna get we're gonna get like a bunch of those um overload like they're overheating and stuff like that because those coils are dirty i, I can bet you that Not on call yet. Got to enjoy every weekend. That's for sure. Try not to work. Well, I mean, I work for myself. Try not to work. Um, try to handle everything during the week and then kind of do a walkthrough of uh, different places, right? Like we do a lot of hospital work and stuff like that. So if we can go through and kind of catch things before they happen, like, I don't know, you hear one that's low on charge or you want to like kind of open up and, and check some electrical. Uh, you might be able to be able to avoid some calls. Did troubleshoot a freezer over the phone for a couple of coworkers. Uh, Dixo controller was set for fans to be on during defrost. I had one of those. Um, I can't remember the brand on it. Hospital got these new, uh, what do you call it? Reaching reach in coolers where they are like they're prepping the the trays for the patients and all that and they had these uh these dixo controllers right and one of them was was acting up and then the sensor went bad and and this and that so we gave them a new controller a new sensor and then i realized you know how to we had to program it because it wasn't obviously it's not for that specific unit and um I was wondering what was wrong with it. And it was, it was one of those where it's um, set. It wasn't supposed to be on, I think, because it ran heaters or something. So, yeah, you got to double check your work. Sheldon, have you done any work with the new refrigerants? Uh, no. I asked the guy on the, on the counter and we're not, there's not a whole lot of it here yet at my parts house. And even then, I, I don't think they're going to, I haven't seen, I know R32 is one of them and they're going to be, um, whoops. And they're going to be in carrier, I believe, and maybe some other ones, but there's a guy that I'm going to have on the podcast uh, pretty soon. Hopefully he's, he's available and he actually has been doing R32 for quite a while now. Um, I don't know if he's like, I don't know if you have to be, I know some people do the certified this and that. I, we went through the same thing with 410. I think I had my 410A certification, which was useless. It didn't mean anything. Uh, 454 was the one that the uh, the dude was was telling me about because he's like I asked him if he's seen any of the like the R32 or the or the 454B I believe as far as like people uh, ordering it or, or servicing it and stuff like that and he hasn't seen R32 he's seen the 454.
Brett just had on Don Gillis about A tools. Yeah, we've. I mean, there's. I mean, he's the one that would get technical about it, right? Um, I don't get super technical, but I've had like Tony from Field Peace and um, who was the other one? Craig Migliaccio uh, went over it briefly on the podcast. And they both essentially, you know, said the same thing. It's the same as 410A. Um, at least R32 is, I believe, is in 410A. So they're one and the same. It's just the flammability is slightly higher. And uh, you got to uh, just be aware of it and, and whatever uh, the manufacturer wants you to do. But it's the same. It's all the same. R32 train, Dakin and their companies, 454. No, 32 train and Dakin and their companies, 454 carrier and their family. Um, I don't know, maybe I got it backwards, but yeah. Um, I hope we can get away with one. We'll see what we end up seeing out in the field because I. I'm not going to put another refrigerant rack in the, um, on the van. Um, I have two, two racks cause I carry 404, sometimes 134A, 410A, 407C. And then I'll carry at least three recovery tanks unless I'm missing one. Yeah, because I think I have two, two, three tank racks, and I carry four, I don't know, four and two or something like that. I carry like two or three recovery tanks uh, just in case we're out there and I have to do, I have to work on a system or recover that's uh, 404, and then I go to the next call and I have to recover like 410A, you know, stuff like that happens. Yeah, I don't know if I got it backwards or I read it backwards, but that's what I thought. Uh, favorite replacement for R22, we used to use... No, oh, I forgot to plug that in. We used to use... Um, what was that one? 427A. And then I stuck to 407C for everything. So I know... You're not, or I guess it's not the best, but it's worked for us. Recently, yeah, I've, I've been wanting to change out to one of the others. It's just 407C was uh, the one that worked for us across the board, no matter what. Uh, obviously, it's PoE, but we had, or we also were putting in compressors, and in the literature, they wanted 407C. And then I ended up, uh, you know, trying it out for different things. And it worked even on my refrigeration stuff. Whereas 427A caused issues with, like, some of the equipment I had. Brian is going to sound off on his... R22, 410A, 134A, 404, 448, and R290. And then you're going to have to add R32, 454, whatever else we're going to work on. So right now, when I'm working out of the truck, I do end up, um, I do end up, like working out of the truck, I can't carry all those refrigerants, right? I'm not going to put a rack in the truck. Or anything like that. I wasn't expecting a lot of calls anyway, but I'll take one or two with me at a time if I know what I'm working on, right? If I got a refrigeration call, I'll take the you know the 404 or whatever it is, uh, the 134. If I got some AC calls, you know I'll carry the 410, or I'll try and carry the common ones, which would for me would be 404 and 410A. So eventually, I think when all these other ones come out especially for us that do a lot of older equipment. 
Um, <laughs> especially for us to do a lot of older equipment, uh, I'm probably going to just going to stock the most popular ones. And then if I get a call for something, let's say it's, it's R32 or something like that, I'm going to go make the trip to maybe the shop and like change it out. But um, Brian, no blue one. That well, isn't that the the TX something TD. I don't know TXD. Whoops. Because uh, when I was working on that place that had the rack, the mini rack system, uh, they were going to charge it up. They had that blue on one. So they had like a pallet of that stuff. <laughs> when I worked... When I worked for a refrigeration only shop, I carried twelve different tanks. So you carried them simultaneously on your on your van. Jesus, where do you put that? We're live, Josh. Hold on, real quick. I was trying to fix the light. Can't fix the light. All right. Anyway, uh, Josh had a bunch arguing on the best replacement for R22. Um, my question was, what's R22? If you're still using R22, it's most likely in like a supermarket. I don't know who still puts it in on, on residential, like at least this year. Because like, who's paying for that? Who's still paying, like a homeowner, who's still paying for that? Yeah, this light just completely died. Oh, do you think uh, solderless joints will be the um, the new way to go? So I'm just realizing that there's companies out there that don't, for insurance purposes, do not use a flame. So they do not braze unless they absolutely have to, but they use it to their advantage and they market themselves as a flameless uh, business. So they only press uh, water, refrigerant or anything else like that. Uh, they're going to be pressing all that stuff. And I never thought of it that way uh, to get like a, a break on your insurance. So there's companies out there that are uh, press only already. Experimenting. No, I have a, uh, I think I might move uh, locations in, in the house. So we're trying it out. I want to see how it sounds. Uh, there's no podcast this week. I, there's five. I can only, I'm only, what do you call it? I'm only, um, I only do four episodes a month. So like there's five weeks this month. So there's a, a mid break. I'm using it to test uh, this area 
I'm going to see how it sounds after and, you know, we'll see how it goes. I got to get my sign up, you know, all that stuff. So we're back. I paid so much money for this damn laptop and it cannot hold a charge. I thought it was gonna be good. What is up? Uh, yeah, we're still live, right? <laughs> I'm here. I, it doesn't sound as good probably, but uh, I have this laptop. It's freaking, what do you call it? It's a uh, Lenovo, something like that. It's advertised as a, uh, as a gaming laptop. And like, it doesn't even hold the charge. And this stupid light just completely died. Yeah, I don't have anything else. Um, Boston. Oh, I didn't see that. Adrian's nickname is Hollywood. I'm going to call you Miami. I forgot the plug. I'm not going to go get it. <clears throat> you figured you pay so much for a laptop and it could last an hour. Where it was not even 30 some minutes. Uh, Adrian, a tool class says refrigerant cylinders can't get above 125 degrees. You're going to know before I do what happens when they get hot. I need to, I forgot about that. I had thought about that when it initially, when they initially were announcing like the official phase out or change uh, this year. And I was like, I don't know how that works. I don't know what the temperature is for like the current refrigerants, but I've never tested how hot my van gets. I'll, I'll, that'll probably be something on my to-do list is to see i've never done it i don't know if anybody else has um how hot does it get in the van like in the back where your, your refrigerant is or you can just put your trade fox umbrella on top of your van to keep it keep it cool I'll have to check that because that was a concern of mine too. Is like, if there's an issue with them getting too hot, it, my van, I mean, it could stay cool. 
Um, I purposely left the, uh, I, they're not going to wrap the top, so that should help it. But um, uh, they, um, yeah, I don't know, because it gets like 110 or more here. What's up, Victor? Sam Andrew, Boston. Orifice, TXV, EEV, which one do you feel more comfortable with? Um, I hate the Orifice, no. I hate the kind that goes that's on the carriers that has the uh, distributor, like the distributor tube. I hate those. Um, anything else? I mean, I would prefer a TXV. Uh, I've never had an issue with an EEV though, and I've worked on a few of those. And the only time I changed um, an EEV was because manufacturer made me under warranty, and that wasn't the issue. That the issue was a board. Uh, orifice, um, I don't have too many, like, I don't have any, I don't have too much experience with like piston, whatever other style that you see, like on residential. I've, I normally deal with T, like just regular TXVs. Brian, see ya. I don't know if I can uh, spoil it, Josh. Uh, we got Brian. I, he just took off. We got Brian uh, Sanders coming on. He might be on here next. I got a dude that does uh, nothing but ice machines coming on. Uh, if you guys have, I've recommended him. If you guys have seen uh, Ice Machine 411 on YouTube, I think the dude has amazing content on Ice machines, especially, you know, with that being people's, um, you know, like they're not the most comfortable with ice machines. Um, I think he has a good channel for that to help out people on, on that end. There's not a lot of people that do good ice machine videos um, That, that show you from, from beginning to start, like on a, tro on a service call or install or anything. Uh, I was gonna see if Gil and Curtis wanna come on mine. Uh, just keep in mind, Curtis is bedtime. Uh, have you heard the name Marvin Zindler? Nah, it doesn't ring a bell. I'm sure Gil would. Um, he loves to talk. And he has... His new studio should be up already. Curtis's bedtime is like 8. Um, are you Eastern time too? No, you might be able to get him. But for me, oh no, you started eight. I don't know. I get I'm, my brain is like fried. Or, yeah, Eastern uh, slime in the ice machine. Just don't don't ever ask. Don't ever ask me where to eat, and don't ever. Don't ever look at the ice machine if you get ice. You start at 8.30 your time, so that is 7.30 for me. You might be able to catch him. Oh, no, 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 you, you are in his time zone. You won't be able to catch him. You can talk to him. He might, he might be up for it unless he's, because on our show on nights, 
Uh, if we go past eight, you can tell. You can tell. And then his, his uh, Riley will come and get him at eight on the dot. Oh, I <laughs> did. My brain is like fried. I've been running so many down calls. Why is my internet not working? I don't know why, but my YouTube is not working. And I noticed everybody dropped out. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Oh, man. All right, guys. I'm going to dip out. YouTube is not working on my phone. I don't know what's going on. I can't check anything. Um, appreciate everybody for coming out. Uh, we'll have a new episode next week. We'll have HVAC Nights on Thursday. Don't forget. Come by. See what we're up to. I got a lot of... Uh, a lot of work. I see people in the chat, but it says one or zero. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with it. Like, I'm trying to check it on my phone, and I, it won't let me go to my own channel. I don't know what's going on. But uh, that is just a sign to maybe get off, <laughs> um, get some rest. So hopefully you guys are doing good. Hopefully you guys are killing it, doing well. Stay safe, and yeah, see you guys.